guys are ready to play something different, something unique, something that is ever-changing? How about something that is a complicated board game, which is a card game? That's what this game is called anyway, complicated board game, the card game. It's by Offcut Games, and it plays two to six players, it takes probably about 20 to 30 minutes to play, and it's for ages, I don't know, 10 and up. This game is similar to games like Flux, in the way you're going to be basically having your hand of cards, you're going to be playing them out, trying to achieve a certain victory condition. There's a specific baseline set of rules to this game. If you can get rid of all of your pieces and attach them to the board in the middle of the playing area, that is going to allow you to win the game. But of course, that can change based on how players choose to play cards on you or on themselves. There's also a certain board state that the game's going to have in which you'll be placing certain pieces down onto other certain areas, in which case then you can win the game in other a variety of ways. Of course, this game can play for two players, which is a pretty simple back and forth game, or it can get really complex with six players. The game is nuts. This game is crazy, much like the game Flux, and you never know what's going to happen, and everything seems pretty straightforward and simple until something random happens, which changes the entire style of play for you. However, the game is a basic style, I would say, gateway game to a simple card game that kind of turns itself on its head. But enough talk about the game as far as without seeing it. Let me go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you what comes in the game. I'll show you how to play or how a turn or two goes, and then we'll come up and I'll discuss more about this complicated board game, which is in fact a a card game. So here we have complicated board game, the card game, and everything included. And there's two different types of components. There's the piece pile and there is the deck of complications. But it, within them comes different types of cards and tiles. What you're going to do for a two-player game is give everybody four cards as well as five pieces randomly after shuffling this deck here and, of course, shuffling this deck here as well. And then you're going to place out the starting board state, which is orthogonal, which means you're going to have one of these guys come out and basically people are going to be placing these guys uh, onto the board here to remove all of their pieces. And that's the idea of the game is you can remove all your pieces. And if you do that, you will win. But before we do that, let's go ahead and discuss the deck of complications and the different types of cards in there. For instance, there's going to be cards like this, win conditions, which will change the win condition for you for the game. This one specifically says you can play this card face up in your holdings at the end of your turn draw a piece from the piece pile which is over here and if you have 10 or more pieces in your holdings you win the game so if you can manage to hold as much pieces as you possibly can up to 10 you're going to win the game and players will see this in general when you get these you're just going to simply place them face down but there will be certain ones like this one here which will change that rule the next card we can take a look at is a board state changer this says pieces are deployed on top of pieces uh, that they are playing on it, which normally in the game you're gonna be using these up down left right rules but when you play one of these guys out you place it right on top of that one changing the way you're gonna be placing down your pieces uh, this one over here is a rule and this makes everyone abide by that rule if anybody plays that everyone including the player who plays it has to abide by that rule this one says that castles are wild and they can be played on any piece in the game so these become instant wilds pretty useful right and anybody is able to utilize this rule uh, or must utilize this rule until it gets removed. These are solo rules, which are the same thing as rules, but you can give this to yourself or another player, and then they have to use this specific rule. This one says that you draw one additional card from the deck of complications when you draw each turn. This is a positive solo rule, so it's very likely you're going to play it on yourself as, as opposed to your opponent. The final type of card is the most likely one you're going to get, which are event cards. Event cards are like action cards or instant cards. They're cards that you can play on your turn that will provide some sort of board state change or allow you to manipulate your player's pieces or draw additional deck of complication cards or complication cards and a variety of other things as well. And those are the five different types of cards in the game. I'll go ahead and set these aside. You also get the rule book and, of course, the box to the game. So let's go ahead and begin. We'll take one of the top cards, uh, one of the top uh, what do you call them, tiles from the piece pile and place it in the middle of the board so everybody can see it. This is the play space where everyone will be playing on. And then we'll begin the game starting with the player on the right because he has the most complicated game or he's the owner of this game, whatever rule you want to make up to start the game. To begin the turn, you simply draw a card from the deck of complications and then you spend two action points. You can spend action points by playing cards in your hand or by placing pieces from your uh, stock over here onto the main board. The cost associated with each card is either going to be on the top right for the pieces 
or the top left for the complication cards. So use your two actions wisely. Uh, when you place these pieces down onto other pieces, it's, the way it works is pretty simple. You'll look at this and then you will see where you can play, where these get placed onto. So for instance, I can place this spaceship onto a castle, which in turn is going to allow me to have one piece less for my holdings area. So that's also going to cost me one action, which out of the two, I'm now down to one. And if I want, and I have something that can play on a green, which I don't, or if I had something that could play on a blue, which I don't, then I could play those. Or I can go through my hand here. Well, here's a rule I could play, and this is actually for free. It says any player can spend one action to discard one card from their hand and draw a new one. So I'll go ahead and add this to the game, and anybody can use that. And then I've got a one over here, which lets me draw two cards from the deck. So I can go ahead and play this for one action, making me go down to zero, and then I'll draw two new complications. These are the uh, win conditions I have. And whenever you get them or whenever you have them, you're simply going to put them face down in front of you and that only you can utilize. In this case, this doesn't says whenever you draw this card, uh, place it face down in your holdings. If all players have one or less cards in their hand, reveal this and you win the game. And this one here says, when you draw this card, place it face down. And if there are ever eight or more rules in the rules lane, you win the game as well. So less cards in hand is good or more rules in the rules lane. And then that's it for this player's turn. And move on to the next player. They simply draw a card from the deck and they perform two actions. And in this case, what do we want to do? We want to go ahead and play this one here. That's for one. And then, hmm, I guess we can play this sheep as well. And that'll be two. And because that's the way this player can currently only win the game, getting rid of all these cards, it's a pretty good move. So he can't actually use these cards now because he spent his two actions and thusly ended his turn. Going back to this player over here, he's going to go ahead and draw a card and look to see what he's got here. Now, luckily, this guy got dropped, so we can go ahead and play a soldier here, which is only going to cost us one. And then, bam, we've got a hat we can play because it fits onto the soldier. So that's two actions for this player as well. Then it pushes on to the next player here. And it's kind of a race to try and place all your pieces down, or unless you can manage to pull off one of your secret win conditions as well. All right, so he's drawn his card, and now he can go ahead and look around and see what he wants to do. And uh, maybe he'll just go ahead and place this soldier up here on this sheep. It's pretty useful. And then he'll place the spaceship onto this castle. We'll go ahead and hold off on the cards here. And uh, he's spent his two actions. And then it'll be this player's turn here. And it would keep going until somebody emptied their holdings area. Now, of course, there are a lot of cards in the game that can manipulate what pieces get played where and how the different rules of the starting board state will change. And finally, this last little thing is the golden meeple, which means you can place it on anything, but nothing can be played on it. So it'll cost you two actions. A little more expensive than these ones, but it is a wild. And that's the basic idea of the game. If you can win through one of your secret win conditions, or if you can win by removing all your pieces and putting them into the piece piles here, then you are the champion of the most complicated board game, the card game. <laughs> All right, let's come up. Discussing complicated board game, the card game. Well, I mean, the name is just ridiculous in and of itself. And I think that was kind of the point as to what the designer was going for. But nevertheless, it plays like Flux and it is as complicated as Flux is. So if you find that game not too complex, then it's not gonna be that complicated. And if you do find it a little crazy due to the fact that the game's always changing, the board state's changing, how you win, what rules are involved with the game, then it might be a little complex for you. For me and most people I play with, the heavier gamers, they found this game to be pretty standard as to how a card game would be played and understanding the fact that the rules will change based on the cards, which is generally the way all card games work. You know, just like in Magic the Gathering, it's always based on whatever the cards say, which always trump the rule book, which is a nice way of including that in this type of a game. It functions like that, and so you always get that rule built into your head from this game and games like Flux. Uh, now, I've mentioned Flux a lot, so what is the differences between this one and that one? Because they do have some similarities, and I would say the biggest difference between this and that one is this one is going to be have these pieces involved and you're basically making a base a puzzle per se like one of those little diagrams and you're like manipulating the board and how you change the board state is going to matter as opposed to doing set collection this is where you're trying to get rid of cards but nevertheless the deck of complications has a lot of similarities as for how you're going to win the game the different piece requirements how you're playing the cards down as well as the actions which can be quite upsetting for certain players there's some solo rules that are really good for you and really bad for your opponents and in certain ways you might be able to uh, manipulate the game to make the one player almost 
very unlikely to win the game due to the requirements that are upon them, and they'll have to search the deck to find ways to remove those requirements, which can be quite a doozy. The win condition variants are super fun, super cool, and when they pop up, it's random and you weren't expecting it. Like that one card in hand, nobody would think that because you want to play the cards whenever you have nothing else to play. That being said though, nothing else to play. Sometimes in this game, you won't have anything to do. And if that happens, you have to pass. And that can be kind of a negative experience, uh, whereas opposed to maybe another game which will let you spend two actions to draw a card. Could be something you could implement into this game, because on the occasion you won't have any pieces in your little pile to place in the middle of the board. Or there's certain cards in your hand you don't want to utilize, or simply uh, can't utilize due to the restrictions the game currently has. But overall, it's very fluid, it's very simple, and it is fun. If you like games like Flux, and other games that share similarities and breaking rules and changing the style of a somewhat simple game into something a little bit more complex and twisted, then you're going to enjoy this game. This is a game that I'll definitely be playing on my live streams, just due to the fact that it's a really engaging game, it can have some funny and twisty moments, and it's something easy that people will be able to understand while watching it from afar, which has a lot going for it in that aspect. But as far as something that's a deep strategy style card game, it's not so much like that. It's gonna be more of a fun style game, there's certain random things that will happen which can change the game state so where a player who's instantly losing can instantly win from the luck of a draw due to a certain state in which the board or the player's hands are in which is also a nice twist for certain card games now if you're interested in taking a look at the game complicated board game the card game you can go ahead and get the link down below i'll give you the link to where you can go ahead and pick it up and uh, let me know what you guys think for me solid right down the middle if you enjoy certain card games like i discussed then you're going to enjoy this one as well is it an is it different enough? I don't know. It's more just uh, based on whether you like set collection or whether you like place pasting uh, the, the puzzle down onto the board. And uh, of course, the more players, the more complex and big it looks. So it's really up to you. You decide and let me know.